Hello my soccer universe, welcome to the review of what happened in the Champions League. Uh, first off, I want to say I'm very sorry that I have not, that I've been getting quite some comments late, lately on my videos, but I've been quite swamped and I will probably try today or maybe tomorrow when I get the time to really take my time to reply to those. Please keep commenting. I love it. I read it. I just don't have all the time uh, available to dedicated go through so i usually pick a day in the week where i go through them and uh, really take my time responding to these but yeah champions league a few new jerseys those two here are up there making the wall now maybe a little bit nicer i decided to wear liverpool you know probably that they have already gone through uh because these days how often can i wear liverpool so i decided yeah uh before i pull down the porto jersey which is the only one that i have and kind of mess up the wall let's take liverpool also putting the white one up there balances things out a little bit as well as for headlines, I think the main headline, but I don't want to pull it necessarily in the title, is I honestly think the Messi-Ronaldo era is officially over. It's not to say that none of them will win the Champions League anymore, but the era where both of them, they are lifting their teams to go forward and move deep into the Champions League, and it's only a question who, which team of who will win that era definitely 100% over. I have to say uh, Messi's performance at least um, yesterday was better than Ronaldo, uh, was better than what Ronaldo was doing. He was very much an instrumental part in his team, which honestly I have to say Ronaldo was not. So uh, that has to have seen. But we have the Norwegian superstar is rising. We had maddening refereeing decisions, I have to say. But we also had quite some high drama. And I also have to say we had uh great playing toothless spanish teams in there so yeah quite some stuff happening and we'll start with one of those toothless teams uh, i did not expect much from dortmund sevilla uh but you know i watched the uh, uh, sky conference uh, on both days uh, because it gives you the best overview of, of what's happening but it doesn't necessarily give, give you the best feel of the game but I think the feel of the game for Dortmund Sevilla was pretty clear Sevilla really wanted to get that win Sevilla really thought they had a chance against Dortmund um, and the way they played honestly it was utter domination Dortmund could not free themselves from the pressure that Sevilla put on uh, Sevilla, lots of fine passes, quickly recovering the ball, launching another attack. The only thing, and I was already laughing, I mean, I, from minute 20 on, roughly, I thought, it's all beautiful and a lot of pressure on Sevilla, but is there any action that they've been producing in the box? Not really. I think Marvin Hitz had to, uh, in the first half, once really get involved but that was not even that crazy of a chance the rest it was all uh from one side of the box going back going around going da, 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 da. it's always around but there was nothing in the in in the box and if there was a shot it was duly blocked uh and yet deep defenses were also kind of, kind of a characteristic of um this champions league week so for all the pressure they asserted on dortmund there were no clear chances and it was almost about to happen the way it happened in the first half yeah a counter-attack where royce really sweetly gets the ball uh packs it back to holland who can pull, pull it in, in the empty net and it's one nil Dortmund completely against the run of play completely undeserved but you could see Holland is there I actually think if Sevilla would have Holland uh, it might have looked a lot better but of course uh, really, really six, uh, Sevilla will never get a player like Holland at least uh, not at this time uh, of the century <laughs> let's let, let put it that way um, and so it was a rather lucky 1-0 lead for Dor Dortmund but what then happened at the beginning of the second half and I really thought okay Sevilla probably said, yeah, one goal put back. Yeah, it would have been nice to win 2-0. Uh, That's gone off. They're not going to have a bad. We can score against this Dortmund team because they are, uh, as a team, they're not all the great. Yeah, they have a great man up front. That great man up front um, scored the 2-0. Or at least I thought so. I mean, uh, that was a run from Holland where he has the ball. He runs inside the box. He completely destroys the Sevilla defender who... Um, he, 
he tries to tackle him. He puts out a strong, strong shoulder and it's like <laughs> going back. I mean, an uh, absolute uh, computer game goal in many ways and puts it from an acute angle in the box. I thought this was an excellent, wonderful goal. It was initially given and then they went to war. And this is one of those things. Um, I think that goal should have stood. I say it like that. But the referee lo looks at it and decides that although it, the challenge came from the severe defender, that Holland made, made a foul. And to be honest, no. Uh, if Holland would have made an action towards that, the only other thing is he made the run and you could say he str strengthened the shoulder. But isn't that allowed? The way the severe defender uh, charges in, I think the foul was definitely coming from his part. It didn't. Goal disallowed. But... Two and a half minutes before that, there was a, a shirt pull in the box. Yeah, that's an easy call. That's a penalty. Uh, but because the game was uh, flowing, you, we have to give the penalty. I was already a little bit... Nah, 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 nah. So, Haaland wants, wants to go up. He tries to be cute with, with the penalty and the penalty is saved. And while the penalty is saved, the goalkeeper of Sevilla kind of yells at Haaland. And that was basically the big scene of the whole game uh, in itself. However, he was too early off the line, so the penalty has, has to be taken this time. Holland scores and, complete, and totally taunts uh, the goalkeeper. And there has been, between the foul not given, there was the 40th minute, until the penalty was scored, was the 54th minute. And when the penalty was not, uh, was initially not convert, uh, con converted or, or, or saved, Sevilla launched a, uh, launched a very furious counter-attack. It was absolute madness. Goal is scored, and then in the celebrations, Holland, yeah, being the strong man, he knew that the Sevilla players are going after him. Uh, and I think uh, he, he, he was even tackled by a fellow teammate uh, to kind of protect him. But honestly, um, I could understood why he was reacting that way, because he had been taught it himself. On the other side, now the players know, we can get to Holland. We can get to Holland. So, yeah. So at that moment it's 2 for Dortmund and you think there's no way back for Sevilla. However, they themselves get a penalty that Enesiri uh, puts in. And then it comes roaring back. It comes roaring back. Sevilla having chances, but the same problem as before. They cannot find a clear angle to put the ball in. And this year in the 96 game, it was a huge uh, stoppage time, understandably so, with all the penalty uh, trouble. And they had their chances uh, to get the third goal and go into overtime, but it did not happen. It probably would have been deserved that that, that that game at least goes to overtime because that was everything but a clear one for Dortmund. Uh, but Dortmund move on and let's see who Holland uh, will destroy next time around. Juventus Porto, that was also uh, another great game. And uh, definitely the Tuesday games were the much better, better ones than the Wednesday games. Uh, I have to say that was the game that I was really looking forward to uh, because I, I thought we might get a, a big game and uh, that was a must win for Juventus in any regard. I mean, not winning the game, but really moving on uh, to give a little bit of validity to the project. And moving on, they did not. And the way they, I mean, in the first half, uh, Porto defended deep and Juventus had nothing to do. Uh, could not find a way really through, except in the third minute, Morata with a great header uh, that you have to bury. You have to bury that header. Then in the third, third minute, one nil Juventus and everything goes clear. That the penalty for Porto, given, I have to say, that was one of those that I found absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I don't think there was really a foul there. Yes, there was contact, but again, the action was coming from the Porto attacker Taremi. Penalty is given, Sergio Oliveira make, 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 makes it 1 0. To be fair, it did not change much for Juventus because you knew that they anyway needed to get at least two goals. Yes, two goals would have gotten you through, but now two goals get you into overtime. But Porto played it really smart, and old Pepe, I mean, he played an outstanding game back there really holding Juventus at bay and the other thing that I did not understand Juventus always uh, you know when it was dangerous it came through Cuadrado crosses but they didn't use that option very often and it, they always tried to go through 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 the middle so it was uh, really another one of those performances where I thought that Juventus is kind of disappointing However, right after the heaven the only way that Ronaldo contributed to the game at least for his team 
is uh, that right after I have the ball, uh, he stops it in, 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 in the box, it bounces back to Chiesa. I don't even think that this was uh, such a conscious effort of Ronaldo to assist Chiesa, because uh, I definitely think he wanted to stop it and take it himself. But the ball falls to Chiesa, who beautifully makes it 1-1. And then the scene that changed the game. Uh, Taremi, who got a yellow for a foul before, um, there is an attack for Porto that he wants to have launched, but it's not given for off. I think for offset or another foul or something like that. And he just punts the ball away. And it's the second yellow card. And all the Juve players around knew it. All of them showing and he gets sent off stupidly. I think um, this is A, stupid from the player. You don't do that. I know you are frustrated. But if the referee is a little bit of feel for the game, you don't send a player off there. Honestly, uh, this was definitely going too much by the book, but that changed the complexion of the game and Juventus was furiously attacking after afterwards. Chiesa having a huge chance where I think Pepe makes just enough contact. I mean, he had the, the empty net there, but the ball was a little bit too far. He gets to the ball, but due, due to the touch of uh, Pepe, he cannot get the shot of properly hits the post. A little bit later after again, a Chiesa, uh, uh, Quadrado uh, assist. Chiesa scores the equalizer and now Chiesa has scored all three goals, not Ronaldo, Chiesa was the one who actually lifted uh, Juventus. But then, honestly, Juventus took it too easy. I thought they should feel... They, Porto was at that point only hanging back. I mean with uh, four in the back and then five deep or sometimes switch, switching out. Porto was hanging really, really back and they were all they wanted was at that point to get into overtime, maybe even get to the penalty shoot. There were not many uh, intentions of really going actively forward to score a goal. And Juventus should, should have gone for the juggler, which, which you know, yes, Quadrado hit the uh, bar at one point. Uh, then uh, Morata had a goal, this, this allowed, and I really was hoping to not get an overtime uh, around. So I was actually celebrating that Morata goal. Honestly, I was a little bit more on the Juventus side of things uh, because the Italian team, I want Italian teams to do well. However, I, the longer the game went, went on and I saw how Juventus is not taking the game really to Porto and the way especially Pepe was defending, I actually said if Porto go through, I'm actually all right with it. More and more than all right, all right with it. It also will give me a chance to uh, wear this Porto jersey, uh, at least to the office, which I did yesterday. So yeah, uh, that I saw it level, yes, maybe for Italy, Juventus should show win, but I saw the Porto over the entirety of the game and Juventus had just one half where they were really, 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 really good. Uh, or trying and then they didn't try too much and that egg, egg actually fr frustrated me. I, uh, this didn't mention, I think Quadrado hit once the bar as well. They brought McKenny on, uh, they brought the Licht on. But it was all a little bit da, 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 too slow, not too much going forward and you didn't get almost anything from Morata and definitely not from Ronaldo. So to overtime the game goes. And it was a game that you wanted to watch. It was very enthralling watch, but I have to say the first half of extra time, it was pretty clear Juventus kind of break down Porto and Porto just wants to go to a penalty shootout. However, it kind of a little bit changed and in the second half, Porto say, yeah, we maybe can hurt Juventus a little bit and uh, they were looking for launching the counter-attack. Uh, Juventus also brought on Bernadeschi for, and Kulusevski, who uh, Kulusevski, I think, came on too late. Arthur was not a really a factor in that game as well. Uh, Chiesa was just guessed and I thought it, this was a good uh, sub sub substitution. Um, also, I have to say at that point, you were a little bit on the edge of getting a player sent off as well because uh, Makeli's cards were sitting kind of loose and there was definitely a second yellow red in there uh, for Chiesa and Quadrado especially. So uh, it was maybe, you know, you needed to calm things down there as well. But uh, Musa Marega comes off um, and then Porto get a free kick. Again, a little bit questionable one, but free kick they get. The wall is being put. Ronaldo's in the center of the wall. Sergio Oliveira runs up. It is not a hard, but it's a very nicely put shot. The problem is the shot goes straight through the wall, through the legs of Ronaldo, who together, I think, with Morata, they just turn sideways. I mean, that is a leaky leak wall. At first, when you see the ball going in, yes, uh, Jesny gets there. 
but that's the corner of the wall. And if you're afraid of a low shot or whatever, I mean, first of all, the wall has to stand firm, especially if you're the superstar, take one for their team. Don't let the ball go through your legs and then maybe have someone lying there even. Uh, I mean, you are one man up. This was the most mad, 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 mad thing and sums up Ronaldo's evening right, right there. Luck had it that Rabio uh, immediately got one back from a Bernadeschi corner. So you think, yeah, game on. It was then really, really exciting, exciting again. However, Rabio, there was a, a, a um, very late, late on a really uh, opportunity for Juventus to have the ball, to play it out, maybe to cross it into the box. But Rabio saw a clear path and the ball bounces and puts it over the bar. And I have to say, at that point, yes, I could understand the urge to shoot, but there was not a shooting position. Absolutely not. Uh, you have to put it in, in, in the box because if you shoot it, the ball goes back to Porto and Porto does, does the best to keep the ball. Exciting game. Exciting game. Absolutely. And Porto, I think, deservedly moved on overall. Spent a lot of time talk, talking about the Tuesday games. Uh, we don't have to talk much about the Liverpool Leipzig game. Liverpool having many chances in the first half, don't converting. I don't understand why Leipzig. I don't understand Leipzig. I really don't. Is Liverpool really that much better than Leipzig, a team that actually pushing Bayern Munich to the brink in the Bundesliga? That doesn't make any, any, any sense. Yes, they had a big chance through Surloth, who hits the uh, crossbar in the sex, as a se second half. But before that, I mean, Salah and Mane should have scored already in the first half. It should have been one or two nil for Liverpool in the first half already. They get the goals. Diogo Jota also won that miss a lot. Jota assists Salah uh, for his uh, first goal. And then like in the for for first leg, once the first goal is scored by Salah, then uh, Mane adds a second one short, shortly after. This time was only four minutes, Origi assisting and uh, Mane really nicely playing back. Liverpool needing the Champions League badly, badly, badly uh, to actually make it back into the big time. So which leaves us with PSG, Barcelona and first off, what a pleasing jersey matchup that was. Uh, that was one of my favorite jersey matchups out there. And yeah, I have to say, uh, it's especially that Barcelona played in all yellow with some red and PSG with the blue and the red. Wonderful. That was that was my favorite jersey match of this year's champ Champions League season easily. At the game, <laughs> what can I say? I mean, Barcelona really tried everything they could, and if Dembélé make was a clinical finisher, the 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 chances were there. Barcelona really, really was taking the game to Paris. Who got the tactics wrong? I mean, hanging back. PSG, you didn't beat Barcelona by hang, hang, hang back. You you used your speed against them. So Gino Dest ran riot and even had a uh, hit once the cross the crossbar. I think Barcelona should definitely have led. Then with similar to the Dortmund Sevilla game, it's all Barcelona playing beautifully, putting a lot of pressure. Maybe even more determined, definitely more, more, more determined than, than, than Sevilla. But they cannot find the back off of that. And Kayla Navas definitely did his part uh, by getting the Sergio Des shot on, on, onto the crossbar as well. Um, and then a really maddening penalty again. Uh, Icardi has no chance of getting there. Yes, he's tripped, but. That was a not an accidental trip by Long Longley, and there was no chance on the ball. There was absolutely nothing. If you saw saw the game, there's a penalty given for that. Really not. But best steps up one 0 again, similar to you. You again for Barcelona probably said, "Yeah, we need to score four anyway." So uh, that didn't change too much there. And as the others are uh, very missing chances, Messi just takes the ball and yanks it in the top corner. It was going the exact the opposite way than the time Barcelona went, where Barcelona uh, Barcelona got a little bit shady penalty penalty. Uh, Messi may may makes one nil, and then uh, PSG hits back, and then. Right before the halftime, and Barcelona was already pressing and played really well. I mean, uh, if anything, they restored their pride and really showed that within what well, the difference those three weeks made. Within those three weeks, Barcelona's confidence is growing, uh, at least to, to a point where you definitely think they can challenge in Spain and possibly are the best team in Spain again. So let's see uh, where, how, how, how well. But the big chance and the big talk talking about of the entire. Uh, round was definitely uh, the penalty was given right, right, right for halftime because there the game could have been decided. 
Messi steps up and the penalty is saved by Navas onto the bar. The problem is Verratti encroached and that they didn't see that. It is so clear to see. Yes, he doesn't step in a box, but he, he steps in this half circle behind the penalty point. That penalty has to be retaken. If that penalty is scored, then PSG is definitely under loads of pressure. Still think they would have gotten it home, but they didn't look good. And in the second half, yeah, a uh, few more chances, but it was not as decisive any, anymore from personal point of view. And PSG only had one really retake. Re re I mean, they it was disappointing, one has to say. So yeah, with those through, we have four teams already now qualified with Liverpool, Porto, PSG and Dortmund. So I'm very curious for, for the draw because the draw can determine a lot where th things are going and uh, we have now the following chances. Liverpool, since they moved on, uh, is still uh, defending the third spot over Chelsea, PSG for the moment, leapfrogging Real Madrid as well. Uh, we have a few movements up, up there because uh, teams got eliminated, um, so yeah. But we still have the top three, Manchester City, Bayern Munich, Liverpool and Chelsea in their PSG and Real Madrid, potentially. I think every, everyone else is out there, but uh, City, Clearly ahead of Bayern and then clearly um, uh, Liverpool. So we know them who are the two uh, fav favorites. And yeah, we have a few more games to be played next week um, where we know for already for sure that City against Gladbach will again be played in Budapest. Budapest becoming Champions League Central. Why not put the entire knocker stage there? Just heading out there. I am hoping Atalanta can do some, something in La Lazio and maybe Atletico something against Chelsea. I don't know. I'm not sure if that game will uh, actually be played at Stamford Bridge as well. So yeah, a lot of action happening. I really needed to get all of this out because there were so many things ha happening that I have to tell you. Let me know what you thought about this. And yeah, my little caveat from the beginning of, of the video, but I will try to get back at you. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Enjoy this video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get, I get updated whenever something is happening in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!